In this video, we're going to look at API authentication inside PowerShell Universal. API authentication requires a PowerShell Universal license to activate. To create an API endpoint that requires authentication, you're going to click APIs, Endpoints, and then click Create New Endpoint. From there, you'll need to specify a URL, uh, a method, and then you'll need to enable authentication. By default, it's enabled once you have a license key installed. And you can see here, when I enable it, the role also shows up. So by default, no role is uh, enforced. And if you wanted to, you could specify a role that uh, you require when create or accessing this API. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to just create this without authentication and not enforce a role. So now I have an authenticated endpoint, and it is going to require authentication to execute it. So if I were to call this from uh, PowerShell Universal Admin Console, you'll see that it returns successfully. I can do something like, hello, and when I execute that, it returns hello. The reason this works in the Admin Console is because the uh, current user's browser session is authenticated against PowerShell Universal, and I'm logged in as admin. If I were to actually copy this, and um, I'm going to open up a new terminal, and execute invoke rest method from a terminal that isn't authenticated, you'll see that I get a 401 auth unauthorized because I don't have access to this API. Um, the reason that happens is because uh, browser had the cookie and the uh, PowerShell terminal here did not. So the easiest way to configure authentication inside PowerShell Universal is to use app tokens. App tokens work uh, kind of no matter what other authentication mechanism you may have installed or configured. And you can access your tokens by either clicking your username and going to tokens, or if you're an administrator, you can click security and tokens to manage all tokens that are currently um, associated with this PowerShell Universal instance. So I'm going to create a new token. Uh, I'm going to click add new token here. I'm going to select my identity. Uh, you could also select other identities if you're an administrator. I'm going to select an administrator uh, role, and I'm going to set the expiration to 60 days. If I was an administrator, I could still generate an app token, but I wouldn't have the option to set the role or change the identity. I can only generate app tokens for myself. So when I click OK, it's going to generate this app token, and I can click this copy button to actually get the contents of that app token into my clipboard. From there, what I want to do is I want to specify headers. This is what's called a bearer token. So we want to specify the authorization header and the bearer uh, string with a space following the bearer string. From there, I want to paste the value that's from my clipboard that I copied from PowerShell Universal uh, into this uh, header. Now when I make this uh, REST call, you'll see that hello is returned because it used that app token to authorize access to that API. So in addition to um, kind of having these lockdown APIs, you also have some information about the user coming into your API. If I were to change this API to uh, call the built-in identity variable, what that'll do is it'll actually return the username of the user that is accessing the API. So this can be useful for um, kind of adjusting the behavior API or potentially um, doing some security logging or something like that about who's accessing the API. And you'll see that I, I see it in the admin console because I'm logged in as admin. And if I were to actually execute this uh, for my PowerShell terminal again, you'll see that admin is returned here as well. And the reason that's returned is because I'm actually using the app token value that I received and output that admin value. Um, additionally, there is a claims principle object that has a lot more information than um, the identity. So if I were to execute this, you'll see that there's like a big JSON string of all kinds of values um, that include things like group membership and also the identity. Um, but if you have things like Windows authentication enabled, that's one way to check actual AD group membership is via this um, claims principle object. So I'm just going to switch it back to identity to make it a little simpler. Um, and let's take a look at uh, one of the benefits of uh, app tokens, and that's the ability to expire and revoke them. So now that I've generated this app token, you'll see that um, 
it expires on December 25th. Um, but if for some reason this app token was abused or we you know, don't know where it's being used and we want to revoke it, you can click this little delete button. When you delete it, it will actually revoke that app token. So you can see that I revoked this app token at 250. And if I try to make this call again, that app token is no longer going to work. Uh, you can see here that the 401 unauthorized is now being returned. So even though this is technically like a valid app token in terms of like um, how it's signed and stuff like that, uh, it's not a valid app token anymore on this PowerShell Universal server because um, you have revoked the app token. So another interesting aspect of APIs is the ability to um, specify authorization for the API, not just authentication. And when we talk about authorization, we're talking about the role of the user that um, can log in um, and access this API. So if I were to edit the properties of this, I'm gonna change the role setting here. I'm gonna get rid of none, and I'm gonna change it to custom. So uh, the custom role is not built in. I, I made this role myself. You could specify a built-in role like administrator or user or something like that. but now only users with the custom role can access this particular API. And you can see there that it is specified there. So let's go ahead and generate another app token. So I'll go to tokens, add a new app token. And I'm gonna set my app token to administrator. And I'm gonna set the expiration to 60 days uh, and copy this. So now if we come back to our invoke rest method call here, I'll get rid of the previous app token, paste my new app token, and now when I call this, you're gonna see that I get a 403 forbidden. So I authenticated properly to the PowerShell Universal server, but I didn't, I wasn't authorized to access this particular endpoint. So it's a valid app token, but it has the administrator role and not the custom role. So now if I were to generate a new app token, where I said admin role can be custom, and I want it to be 60 days, click OK. And if I were to run that again, you'll see now I can access that endpoint again because I have the custom role inside this app token rather than the administrator role. So user roles are configured either via um, claims policy scripts, such as this one. Right now, anyone that logs in this PowerShell Universal server will be an administrator. You can also do claim um, type to value mapping. So that's useful when you have um, Windows authentication and you want to map between uh, the SID of a group and a PowerShell universal um, role. So we have another video on this stuff. Um, additionally, you can also specify uh, static roles for identities. So for example, if the user were to log in, they would get the custom role. Now that we've looked at what you can do with API authentication and authorization, let's look at other ways that you can authenticate against PowerShell Universal to achieve the same effect. So the other two ways are Windows authentication and Forms authentication, or what may be referred to as basic authentication. So first, let's take a look at basic authentication. So in order to use basic authentication, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually call the sign-in URL for PowerShell Universal. This API is built into the management API and the URL is just API v1 uh, sign in. From there, we wanna specify a um, JSON string that contains the username and password of the user that's logging in. Um, you'll see that we're using convert to JSON to change uh, this hash table into a JSON string. And then uh, we're specifying the content type of application JSON. From there, we're gonna specify a session variable, and that's actually gonna establish a session inside this PowerShell universe, or this PowerShell terminal um, that's gonna store the cookie that contains the information about this logged in user. Uh, next, we wanna make sure that we're using a post method because that's what API v1 sign in expects. So when you call this, what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna call the um, built-in form authentication here, and it's gonna execute this script. So in my case, whatever user tries to log in uh, is gonna be successfully logged in and whatever the username they typed in is going to be returned. So effectively, anyone can log in with any password in this environment. Um, you can customize the script how you see fit. By default, uh, we require admin and any password. Um, 
you could have this talk to Active Directory or some other authentication provider if you wanted to. So in my environment, I'm just going to call this. And if it returns successfully, you're going to see this. Uh, the status code is 200, and the content is the return URL of admin. So I successfully logged in via my um, sign-in URL, and now I have a session that I can use with invoke rest method, or invoke web request. And inside the cookie container, it contains a cookie that says that I've established a, um, a session with PowerShell Universal. So now, in order to actually call my API, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call invoke, rest, or invoke web request again. So invoke rest method also has sessions. You can do the same thing with invoke rest method. This is just using invoke web request. Now I'm going to call my uh, authorized URL again. And in this case, I am calling it with a web session variable, which is my session. You'll notice that I got a 403 forbidden, and that is because I authenticated pro, pro, uh, correctly, but I didn't get authorized to access this because uh, it's set with a custom role. So if I were to actually remove that custom role again, uh, no roles required. And now that I were to access it, you can see I successfully saw or accessed this API and return the identity of the current user that's accessing this API. So that's how you access it using basic authentication and authorization. The last form of authentication and authorization that we provide for APIs is the ability to use Windows authentication. So to enable Windows authentication, I'm going to click Authentication, Add Authentication Method, and I'm going to select Windows. So Windows authentication uses either uh, Kerberos or NTLM authentication, um, which is referred to as Negotiate. And it will authenticate against the um, Windows provider, so that either be the current system or um, an Active Directory domain controller. So I'm going to enable this, and now Windows authentication is enabled for my PowerShell Universal instance. What I can do now is use invoke REST method um, with the use default credentials parameter. So if I try to execute this, you're going to see that uh, in more recent versions of PowerShell, uh, you can't actually execute this commandlet without using HTTPS. Um, I just have this local instance running, so I didn't configure HTTPS. But to um, work around that, you can say allow uh, unencrypted authentication. And now you can see that the user that actually executed this endpoint was my local Windows user. So I'm on Adam Desk 2, and my user is Adam R. So if you recall, um, inside the API environment, we had configured it to return the identity of the user that's executing this API. So in this case, I actually had um, my local Windows user access uh, PowerShell Universal. It doesn't actually use the forms authentication at all. So it didn't call this particular authentication script because it's using Windows authentication. That said, it did call my um, roles-based uh, configuration scripts. So um, this pr claims principle here will have information about the Windows user that's currently trying to access that API, and it's going to run and verify whether or not they have these particular roles. So in, in my configuration here, effectively I would get all roles because I'm just returning true from my configuration script. If you want to learn more about how these role scripts work, definitely check out our role videos. Um, It'll give you a lot more information on how you can uh, access information about users logging in and whether or not to give them particular roles inside PowerShell Universal. So in this video, we went through um, authorization and authentication for endpoints inside PowerShell Universal.